Hi, I'm Dan Gleesenkamp. I'm a partner in the California Eden, a network of networks protecting California from harmful invasive plants. So early detection is important. Um, it's the most cost-effective way of removing invasive plants um, and dealing with the harm that they cause. And basically, it's common sense. It's what we do for human health. First, you figure out what's going to be a problem tomorrow. Then you figure out where those things are today. You prioritize infestations for eradication. You eradicate the most important, the most harmful ones. You show your results and you ask for more money and then you keep doing that until the problem's fixed. To do that, you need to know where things are. With the work of uh, Cal CalFlora database, Baden has put together a system for getting information that we all have um, into a shared network that we can actually use. And the basics of it are, um, at the top you can see several different ways for collecting occurrence information. On the left there's the Weed Entry app, which is a, a, a web platform for reporting weeds. The next is the phone, which we're going to be covering today. Uh, the next is geotagged photos. That's photos which have geographic coordinates built into them. There's a lot of cameras available that do that and pretty much all smartphones these days geotag photos. And of course, if you have big data sets, you can just upload a whole data set using the tools that CalFlora has built. All of those go into the CalFlora database, which is um, basically become the standard for managing wild plant information in California. It's where you go if you want to find out um, what occurs where. They've got an amazing array of tools. And for us, they've built a MyCalFlora system, which allows you to manage your occurrence information separate from the rest of CalFlora. You can click a button to publish it and make it publicly viewable, or you can keep it secret. And then from that, you can export a, a couple different ways. On the left, you, can, you see a little web interface that's part of the CalFlora system that allows you to export data in a variety of formats, all kinds of stuff, tab delimited, CSV, you can export shape files in the near future, all kinds of stuff, and use that in Esri products or in spreadsheets or databases or whatever you want. So this video talks about the observer system that CalFlora has put together to use on smartphones. Right now, this, this platform has been built for Android phones. We're working with partners to port it over to the iPhone and to add some new functionality that will make it better. So right now, the system allows you to report occurrences of native or non-native plants. You can add a photo that lets you confirm the identification of your plant, and it's a great reference. It provides a before or an after photo if you're doing treatment of these things. Occurrences are uploaded directly to the CalFlora database, so there's no cables, there's no extra software for you to move the stuff from your phone to the database. And then, of course, you can view and edit your reports using your My Observations tool in CalFlora. Your observations are private until you publish them. You can add additional information, whatever you like. And then when you're done, you can download the data for use in other systems. Um, and then there's also tools that will be provided by CalFlora that hopefully will be enough to be able to manage your data. So the first thing that you do when you get your phone is you download a plant list. And this is one of two times that you need a phone connection, that you need um, phone signal on your phone. You need phone connections so that the phone can communicate with CalFlora and download a plant list. There's a set of different plant lists. In this middle screen, you can see um, dynamic plant lists. All those local lists, they're generated by the phone based on where you're located. CalFlora asks the phone for your, your geographic coordinates, and then it looks at the database, sees what plants are known to grow in the area, and then puts that list onto your phone. There's also static lists, like the one shown at the bottom, which is, which is Napa County's bait and alert plant list. You can also add additional static lists for your park, your nature preserve, the static list that I use is all California plants. It's 10,000 plus taxa and uh, pretty much covers it. Down more phone connection for a while. You can just go out in the field and start mapping plants. And Here we are outside and I'm going to show you how to use the phone to report a plant observation. So you pull out your phone, you start the application, you hit the make observation button, in this case, I think I'm going to report this bull thistle, the Circium vulgari that's growing there. You need, to select, you need to tell the phone what species to report. So you start typing in the plant name. I'm going to do it by common name, bull thistle, B, U, L. And right there, it's got enough letters so that it can start guessing plant names. In this case, bull thistle comes out as the second on the list. So you just click, you select that bull thistle right there and you're ready to report. You hit the Add Observation button, and you've made an observation. It's, now you just got to upload it. If you want to add a photo, you click the Take a Photo button, and then you take a photo. Now when you hit Add Observation, 
you've got a photo along with the observation that can serve to confirm the identification or it can be a before photo for something that you're going to treat. Or it can just be the first photo of a neat native plant that isn't in the system yet. Um, if you're not sure of it, you can hit the info button and the thing will show you a little thumbnail of the plant and you can confirm your identification. Yeah, that's definitely bull thistle. And if you don't need to add photos or anything, you can just use it as kind of a clicker tool. And that's all there is to the system. They're all in the phone right now. You don't need a cell phone signal to be able to do this. It's, all you need is a clear view of the sky, what you would need with any GPS device. Sometimes you don't have it, but there you are. Um, when you're done, at the end of the day or whatever, when you do have a cell phone signal, you hit the Upload Observations button, and the phone starts uploading them to Calflora. If you have a whole lot, it might take a couple minutes. If you have one or two, it takes a few seconds. Anyway, it does it in the background, so it's not something you worry about. And then you're ready to go to your MagCalflora account and see what's in there. When you get back to the office, it's time to pull up your observations and start working with them. You go to Calflora, and you pull up My Observations, and that loads up your own private Calflora database. Um, it's private to you, accessible only with your login information, and it shows everything that you reported. You can search through your observations a bunch of different ways. You can view only observations you've made in a specific county or set of counties. You can view only things for a specific group of species or, or a certain species. Um, observations made only on a certain date, or you can just view it raw. You can view everything that you've published and made publicly available, or only unpublished ones. So in this screen, it shows all the unpublished observations that I've made. These are things that I still need to edit and add information for. On this Google satellite map here, it shows dots for all of the observations that I've made that are displayed here. And in this table, it shows all the observations. Each observation has a separate line. You can see I've got a lot that I need to publish and make publicly available. The topmost one is the bull thistle that we just reported, right here. And it's got a, a unique identifier. You can click on that unique ID, and it centers the map and highlights that observation. So this lets you verify the location. Let's zoom in on that. You can also have a whole variety of different map views. So uh, we'll zoom in on this. And pull, it's, it's always fun to pull up the satellite photo so that you can see exactly where you are. And in this case, you can see that sure enough, that observation was made right there in the creek next to where we're talking. So that lets you kind of confirm the accuracy of the photos. And in this case, as in most cases, it's to within a few feet. The phone, if it has phone reception, it can do assisted GPS. So in addition to just the usual satellite GPS, the phone is talking with servers. So it's pulling information from wireless networks, from other phone users, doing all kinds of neat tricks to kind of narrow down the location. It can get very accurate. So hopefully it's been useful to see how these tools are applied to do invasive plant management or uh, native plant observation and mapping. Uh, again, there's, it's not about any one tool, it's not about having an app for your phone or having a great database that information is stored in or having good tools for, for editing information that goes into that database, but it's about bringing them all together in a system that we all use that's already somewhat the standard for managing wild plant information in California and having an integrated set so that you can make observations using a bunch of systems, that you can upload existing data sets and that those are all pooled together and useful in the future. Um, again, if you have questions about this, go to Baden.org, look at the website, there's contact information there. And this is all fairly bare bones, we're getting started on it. We've got a fully functioning system, my staff are using it to map invasive plants in the field, prioritize those plants for treatment, track treatment actions and outcomes, really the whole suite. But it's just going to get better as more of us are using it, as each of us contribute to build components that serve our needs, we'll have a system that really does everything we need in a transparent, seamless way, without cables, without additional software needed to transfer information back and forth. Um, and hopefully we can just move beyond this, this wild west of inventing your own mapping system and we can have a shared functioning system that works as well as Google Maps.